Hello everyone, my name is Seth Laux and I'm the Creative Arts Therapy Coordinator here at the Living Branches Communities. Um, and I'm happy to be joined by Bridget Schneibel, who's a postdoctoral researcher at Drexel in the Creative Arts Therapies Department, and Nancy Vicario, who's a resident of Doc Woods in the Oakwood Court Personal Care neighborhood, um, but has been a resident also of different parts of the community mm -hmm. as well. Um, and we are here today to talk about music therapy and the transition into long-term care, specifically into personal care mm -hmm. for you, Nancy, um, which is something that Bridget has studied here in our communities, in our Living Branches communities, and is about to publish her work mm -hmm. on. So we're very excited to, to get together for this mm -hmm. conversation uh, with one another and hear from both the research perspective and the perspective of somebody who's lived through it um, about experiences um, with music therapy and transitions. Would you be able to tell me a little bit about how that experience was for you in making that transition from the more independent living situation into, into personal care? How was that transition? I liked it, actually liked it better because I felt like it was just me and I could take care of me. So <clears throat> I wasn't too concerned about the change, but I was enjoying it very much. So I, I didn't have a problem just coming in. The only problem was getting rid of all the stuff I had. <laughs> mm -hmm. So missing your things was a little bit Absolutely, tough. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But you go by past that after a while. Mm -hmm. So I enjoyed it. So it sounds like there might have been just a little bit of difficulty, right, yeah. when you were making. What parts of it did you think, other than your stuff, what, what parts of it do you think maybe made it a little bit of a tough transition? I think not knowing anybody yet, and that was kind of frightening to me. I felt like I'd been dumped off somewhere, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that was um, made it difficult in the beginning days. And in the beginning days, I made it a point to say hello to somebody, because I didn't know anybody. And uh, that took a long time, but it really got me opened up that I could talk to people and, and feel better about where I was. I wasn't even sure why I was there, <clears throat> but it, it all turned out to be beautiful, so. I have nothing bad to look at it. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to hear that, that the process overall has felt like a good one for you. Absolutely. What do you think has helped make it a good process for you? <laughs> the music is absolutely perfect and wonderful. You cannot go and hear that music and sit there like a lump. Your whole body wants to move. It's like wonderful. So I loved it, and every time I know he's on or somebody else is, I want to be there. I want to hear it, even if I'm not singing. It's just, I think it just opens your heart, and I think it gets to other people, and they realize how good it is. And I love it now when I see the place is full of people. That's wonderful. That's done the right way. So it makes me happy. That is lovely to hear, Nancy. No, and it's, it's true. It's, <laughs> it's all true. <laughs> well, what, one of the things I noticed about what you said is, is the connection to other people and how you, you, you notice that it, it brings people out. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll venture to say that some people who move into personal care struggle with mm -hmm. making that connection. Would you say that that's, would you say that that's Absolutely. true as well? Absolutely. I've seen it. Yeah. You've seen it yourself as well. You can't even talk them into trying it. No, no, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So it's a shame because you want to give them that chance. <coughs> Pardon me. But um, everybody's different, made differently, and mm -hmm. they might be frightened. They're not comfortable yet. Mm -hmm. So I just leave it go mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah, it is really very difficult, I think, sometimes for people to make that transition to, to meeting people that they haven't met before, mm -hmm. um, to trying th something they haven't tried before. Right. When, you, 
participate in the music therapy programs, do you notice anything that might help people to take that step out and to take that step to connect with each other? And I'm wondering if you see anything like that happening where people are connecting with each other, maybe people who wouldn't connect otherwise. Oh, I see it every day, every time. Sometimes um, people like to sit, now that's my chair. That's where I want to sit. But if you can get them to move just a little bit, they could talk to somebody new next to them. And I find that so helpful. Just one time, you get into the music sound, and you've got somebody, you see them smile, and I know that what I did or what somebody else did worked, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something we do together, isn't it? The it whole is. community, it's, it's, um, we, it's like we're working together to get closer to one mm -hmm. another, That's and I just right. love that. I love I being part too. of that. Yeah. It really warms my heart, yeah. and it, it, it touches my heart, and part of why I asked you to, to talk about this is mm -hmm. because you have been such a part of that as well, oh, of drawing you. out your neighbors, bringing them, and helping them to make that bridge into uh, f from isolation right. into connection with each other. Exactly. And I'm so glad to hear that the music therapy program has been such a nice way for you yes. to help your, re your, oh, your, your fellow personal care residents sure. to connect. It proves it works, because then the next time you'll see them talking to those other people. So I, I just kind of smile inside and think, oh, it worked. <laughs> it's good. Wonderful. Very good. So Bridget, um, you've had the opportunity to talk to um, some of the folks who live in the personal care parts of our community about some of the things that Nancy had mentioned about the transition into personal care, mm -hmm. into the, the more um, long-term care, supportive levels of care um, from the more independent living arrangement and some of the challenges that they've had with that and some of the, the really nice parts of that process as well. Um, and it sounds to me from, from looking at, at what you found in your study like that you found many of the things that Nancy was talking about. Um, and so I'm really excited to talk to you about that and sort of uh, just keep growing with what you said, mm -hmm. Nancy, um, because that really started us off on a good foot. Mm -hmm. um, that was a, a really great way to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so, so before we get too much into that, I wanna talk about Bridget, because Bridget, you're, you're a familiar face to a few people in the community, but mm -hmm. Um, you're maybe not um, familiar to everybody here um, because you've been here to, to do this study um, and to, to, um, to introduce yourself to some of the folks who participated. Um, but I'd love to learn a little bit about you and your background, um, your work as a music therapist, and what sort of brought you to this point of, um, of getting your PhD and studying this, this process of, of transitions into long-term care through music therapy. Sure. Well, thanks for having me here, part of this conversation. It's very exciting. So I am a music therapist just like Seth, and I grew up loving music. I played the piano. I enjoyed um, the idea of a helping profession, and so I didn't know much about music therapy, but I thought I will, I will study this and see how I like it. Mm. Um, and I'm still, still doing it, so it's been a good fit for me. Um, so yeah, a little bit, little bit about my background. Do you want me to talk a little bit more about coming here to Living Branches? Sure, I mean, I'd love to actually, even, even before that, I'd love to hear a little bit about your career, um, the work you did before you, before you came to the point of doing research sure, and your, work, your background as a music therapist. Sure, so I studied music therapy in college and ended up working in um, a long-term care home much like, much like what Seth does here at Living Branches. And I worked there for over a decade, worked with all kinds of you know, folks that came through and, um, worked with people individually, worked with people in groups, and really saw how music uh, was very impactful for them. And also saw how one of the biggest things that a lot of folks struggled with was moving in mm -hmm. and making that adjustment, getting to know people like you were describing, Nancy, getting to feel familiar with their new home and, and having it start to feel like home. Because at first, it doesn't always feel like home. No. And, uh, and I felt like that was something as a music therapist that I was helping with or trying to help with. Okay. Um, so it's been a passion of mine, both music therapy and working with older adults. 
Um, so that's been, it's been a lot of my career. And then after a while, I decided I was interested in doing more teaching and research. And so I decided to go back to school to get my PhD. And so this study, this research that we've been doing here together has been part of my dissertation process. So that's what brought me to Living Branches. Yeah, yeah and we're glad that, we're, yeah. that you found this connection. Absolutely. Isn't it wonderful that she's chosen or, or mm. come to do so much of your study here in this community? You mentioned a little bit about how uh, this study is about the role that music therapy might play in helping people adjust and helping people mm -hmm. make that transition um, into, into long-term care and into those parts of our community, into like personal care. Um, this particular topic has never been directly studied before. Um, and so could you tell us a little bit more about how you chose this topic? Absolutely. Um, as I was starting to describe a little bit, just reflecting on my own work, working as a music therapist in this sort of setting, um, I realized that this seemed to be a lot of my work, but um, there wasn't research out there. There wasn't you know, formal information about how to go about helping in this manner, how, how to go about you know, with these goals or, or these intentions. And that's really important. We need something to guide us. We need, we need to learn more about this. Um, so it was both my own work and thinking, what do we need? And then looking at the research and saying, this is missing. So um, from, bo from both sides, I was seeing that we need, we need this information. We need this learning. Um, and so that's how I came to this topic in particular. Wonderful. Yeah, and I think it's really exciting that, um, that our community gets to be part of studying something that hasn't been studied before right. and helping to learn more about something that can help people mm -hmm. um, and doing it the best way that we can through research mm -hmm. and to, to help um, uh, use this resource, as the, the resource of music, mm -hmm. to help people as much as we can through this transition process. Yeah. So I think it's really wonderful and exciting that, that you're working in, in part in our communities to help understand that. So tell us about why Living Branches in particular is a community where you would want to do work like this. Sure, absolutely. Well, uh, first off, Living Branches is a community that has the sort of people that um, is a good fit for this study, that we want to look at older adults who are making a move and, and seeing how they're adjusting. But Living Branches in particular has a phenomenal creative arts therapy program that's very vibrant and also very supportive of research and interested in when we can learn new things or take on new projects and always trying to make the community better and look at the next thing. Mm -hmm. So it made for a really good fit um, that I could come here for part of my, part of my research and, and meet with some of the residents and staff oh, here. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful to hear that that's been your experience here because it's been, uh, in, in our experience of, of working with you has also been very positive and, yeah. and uh, your connection with the folks as you talk to them about this, folks have reflected on how positive that's been oh, as great. well. So it's, wonderful. So it's, it's been a, a mutually beneficial conversation, just wonderful to have you as, as part, of the, part of the community. Um, so when you think about this study and, and the conversations you had with folks about music therapy and, and their move into long-term care, what would you say is the aim or the goal of a study like this? Sure, so a study like this, when it's a topic that there's not been any research on before, the, um, the goal was to really start with creating a theory or a model. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to have a way to explain what happens with music therapy and people moving in and how that is helpful or not helpful. Um, so that's, that was really the goal of this particular study, to come up with a theory or model, which we did. Um, and in doing that, um, I really was interviewing and just talking with people. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with residents like yourself. And I also spoke with uh, care staff members, as well as music therapists like Seth. So I tried to get some different perspectives so that I was really learning um, from all sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so um, that is great that you mentioned that because um, part of what I wanted to talk about was how the study was conducted. Um, it, I believe it was interviews yes. and it was not 
just with residents, but also the folks who work here and, and right. the, the, the teams that care for the folks who live here. So right. tell me a little bit about the how the study was actually conducted. Sure. So as you mentioned, it was interviews. Um, and I could either come here and talk to somebody face to face like we're doing or because of the pandemic, I could I'm also met with some people just over the computer and um, most of our participants were residents like yourselves because mm -hmm. you're the ones that know most about what it's like to move in, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I also spoke with some care team staff members, also some music therapist um, team members to get those different perspectives. Um, and so what I had was a lot of interview recordings and all the, all the words that were said in an interview. And so I analyzed that. So I didn't have numbers, but I had words. Um, and that's how I come to developing this, this model or this way of understanding. So that was the final, the final result is um, what's called the music therapy in transition to long-term care model. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And, and um, speaking again about the, the sort of aim or the goal of the study, the model um, am I correct in understanding that the model is sort of meant to serve as a foundation for future work on this area so that we can continue to take the work that you've done and learn more and more about it and study it in different ways? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Um, so, let's see, so you spoke about um, how you conducted the study through interviews of, of residents, you know, mainly of, of people who live here, and um, also some of the staff and music therapists who work here. Um, what did the study find? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we, we did have a model um, about music therapy and transition. And the model really has five kind of stages that kind of go in order. And it helps to explain what is music therapy doing to help folks as they move mm -hmm. in. And like you've, you've described your experience, Nancy, how much you enjoy, um, how lively, how much the music brings you to life that you can't sit there like a bump on a log. Right. And that really, um, that really talks about, a, some, that fits with what is in this model as well. So I'll just say the five stages and we can certainly talk more about them if you like. So the first thing about music therapy is that it's accessible and it's engaging. So it's easy to get involved. It's easy, easy to come, you don't have to be a musician, right? It's easy to play. The second aspect is that music therapy is personal and meaningful. So that's what we heard from folks is that, um, you know, it's music that they like, it's sharing their stories, it's about how they're being part of the music, um, how it brings back memories. Um, so f it feels like it's about you in particular. Mm -hmm. And the next thing about music therapy is that it's a bridge to other resources. So being involved in music therapy is wonderful, but we found that folks that participated in music therapy felt more comfortable or more confident doing other things as well. So I heard you talk about making friends and how music therapy can help, help friendships develop. Um, we heard from some participants who maybe had more social anxiety, but it felt um, easier, more familiar to navigate other aspects of the, of the new home, of the changes. Um, so music therapy helps make other things more effective too. Mm -hmm. The next thing about music therapy is that it facilitates this process of transformation. And that's both an internal transformation and it's also external with the community. So what I mean by that is um, inside a person is learning to look at things a little differently, mm -hmm. maybe learning to see the glass half full we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, mm -hmm. learning to um, feel that this is maybe home, that I, I do belong here, I do have friends here, I am part of what's going on here. Um, and so we kind of get used to the new normal. Um, so that's a big, big part of change that takes place. And I guess you could really call that the, a big part of the adjustment that you're adjusting. So the, the fifth thing, the last thing about music therapy, um, and this is kind of the, 
the big ending goal is that music therapy helps me feel my best self. Mm -hmm. And all these other things about music therapy lead to this. And this is what we want for folks when they move in, right? right. To just feel your best self. Mm -hmm. And feeling your best mm -hmm. self is about um, physically feeling good. Some people have pain and it's about having a good day and managing your pain or just getting a chance to exercise and move. Um, feeling your best self is also about psychological or emotional, feeling like you fit in here and you belong and that you have things to contribute. Um, so f um, fitting in is also about intrapersonal, meaning me within myself, feeling that I'm a person that still has life to live and still has something to contribute mm -hmm. and feeling, feeling good about who you are. And, f and feeling my best self also has to do with interpersonal, so with other people, feeling that I'm part of this community. I'm not by myself. Um, I have friends. I have people who care about me. Um, so fitting in, or fe I'm sorry, feeling my best self really has all of these things that are part of it. It's not just one or the other, but if I'm going to feel my best self, I want to feel good in all of these ways. Sure. Mm, yeah. of Physically, socially, yes. mentally, right. spiritually, yeah. like you still like you belong and you still can accomplish. Correct. So that's what we that's what we found in this study is these things about music therapy lead to this end point, and it's a process, and it doesn't happen the first night or the no. first day. Mm -hmm. It takes place over time and. This seemed to be true for people who were excited to move or planning to move, as well as for people that didn't plan ahead to move and it was maybe a surprise, or some folks had a real difficult time moving in. It's not what they would have chosen. Right. Um, so even for all these people with different stories, this was what we learned about how music therapy could be helpful or how it could impact the moving in process and the adjustment of of getting used to the new new home new normal mm -hmm. yeah so i see i see you nodding your head nancy it sounds like that that's true for that's you exactly right yeah okay exactly. yeah and i see that on a lot of people on new ones coming in yeah. <clears throat> and once i start talking to them you can see almost the change beginning so it's, it's wonderful for me, <coughs> pardon me, but it's, it's even better watching them take it in. It's so it's good. Okay. Yeah. Music has so many ways to it to help people and people don't understand that yet. So it's so nice to see. Thank you for sharing that. Oh no, it's true. And he's, thrown a lot of it into it so that that's really helped a lot of people so we've sort of touched on this a little bit um, taking so the last thing I sort of wanted to ask you about is is taking these studies um, and asking um, what might these findings suggest about how um, our program or a program like this when a music therapy program like the one we have here um, impact the, po the process of transition um, for older adults and family members who are looking forward to making these transitions. So in, I'll ask that question in a different way. If you imagined yourself as uh, a person who's looking to make that transition into personal care or a family member who's um, working with a loved one um, to, to, to make that transition into a personal care, what do you think that the study might um, might bring to light or help help that family or that person understand about the experience itself of moving in? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it's helpful first off to know not just that there's a music therapy program here and it's fun mm -hmm. and we enjoy it, which is true, but also that it's really doing some very helpful things to, um, when somebody's moving in to help them feel better about being here, mm -hmm. to help them feel comfortable faster, to help them build friends faster, to help them feel part of the community. And I think that's 
helpful to know, that's important to know that you're not on your own, that um, there are people who care about you and are here to help you. Um, and it's a very enjoyable way to, to do that. Um, so I think that's maybe the first standout thing. I think for um, staff or other people who are interested in making Living Branches the best community it can be, I think it's helpful to say we understand more about music therapy now. Mm -hmm. And that means we can do that on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So Seth can go out and know better, here's how I might be able to help somebody. And I'm going to keep an eye on that. And I'm going to check in about this. Um, it's helpful for other staff to work with Seth mm -hmm. and to say, you know what, maybe if we work together in this way, or maybe after music therapy, then this new resident will be more interested mm -hmm. in such and such. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing how all the different programs and services can work together in the best way, um, I think really helps to improve the experience, helps to improve the Living Branches community. Mm -hmm. So I think those are two big takeaways from the model and from what we learned in this research. Great. Thank you. I've noticed how many more people have come forward mm -hmm. that were not doing that. They were just sitting in their room. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful to see them come out <clears throat> because of this gentleman and because of all the good things that happen there in doing the music. And it just brings out a lot of things out of people. It's wonderful. It really is. Thank you, Nancy. No, it's true. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, this has just been wonderful to talk about. Um, it's great to hear how um, there are so many ways that, that based on what your study found, that, that we see that music therapy, the programs that we have here, they are sort of like a bridge from the difficult transition to I'm now thriving here. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thriving in this, in this community. Um, people often, I think, don't think of I'm moving to personal care where I'm going to thrive, mm -hmm. where I'm going to be excited to be alive. Right. But um, it seems like it's a bridge to making that possible. I think for a lot of people, that's what we've seen. That's, that's exactly right. what happens. It's exactly right. Yeah. Tell me about your, your room and the team that's, that's worked with you in personal care. Well, when I first got there, it was kind of shocking. And I guess it's because it was different. So I told myself, well, we're going to figure this out. And I did. I, I walked more. And that got me to meeting people. And I got uh, more comfortable with what I was doing. And I found the people that work here, they're more interested in finding what else can they do for you. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. I just wasn't even ready for that. <laughs> and it's great. So, and it works. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that works. So having people ready to help has been a nice, a nice change for you in it your really life. It really has, yeah. Yeah. It really has. And, and do you feel like your room is set up in a way that's, that's helpful for you to also feel comfortable in it? It is, because I've made some changes that works for me, and it's turned out to be fine. Perfect. And besides that, I'm very close to where he plays. <laughs> So that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both so much. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Nancy, for your time today, yeah. for the wonderful, insightful, touching conversations. I feel like we've, uh, we've touched the heads and we touched the hearts of folks in this conversation. And um, I feel like I've learned some things um, both about the study and about your experiences, Nancy, that are just, just so insightful and, and heartwarming. And I really appreciate both of your time in doing this. So thank you so much. Thank you for thank having you. us here, Seth.